at the end of day three at Emirates Old Trafford, it's time for Ask George. Listen to that crystal clear audio. Uh, the first question today is from Frank Morrish, who asks, are Johnny Bairstow's runs the best source of runs? Oh, they're lovely runs. They're lovely runs. They're brilliant runs. He hits the ball so sweetly and so hard, doesn't he? Well, I don't know if they're better. I mean, how sweetly did Moen hit the ball yesterday? Or, or Ben Stokes in general? Or, or was that Crawley? I mean, a brilliant team to watch, aren't they? The most fun team to watch. Uh, JB asks, just how much of Wooden Wokes changed the complexion of the series? Yeah, they've made a big difference, haven't they? Um, the pace of Wood just changes everything. But obviously Wokes is a brilliant cricketer, gives England depth and balance and quality. Uh, yeah, but they've made a big difference. What is it about Wokes' bowling that means that he can make the breakthroughs that other players can't? Well, he's very consistent and he's got a lot of skills, so he can move the ball both ways, in the air and off the pitch, and he can keep doing it for quite a long time. I mean, that's basically it, isn't it? He's a very skillful, very <laughs> consistent bowler. Uh, Josh Caswell asks, is Mark Wood going to be this generation's Simon Jones? Everyone knows he's fantastic, but fantastic, but gutted he's not been about more. Interesting. I mean, he, he took his 100th wicket today. It was quite a lot of wickets. I mean, he's had a longer career, I think, than Simon Jones. And I think... Uh, I mean, Simon Jones was sharp and very skillful. Yes, I kind of think the, the issue with Mark Wood is that he's done a lot of his best work abroad and it feels that it was in the middle of the night in England and stuff and people didn't see it. He's very good in the last Ashes uh, in Australia. He was absolutely fantastic in the West Indies and I think it was in 19. Uh, and brilliant in South Africa. So those are three series straight away where he's been really, really terrific. So. I think, you know, he's probably already taken double the amount of wickets of Simon Jones, has he? So, uh, ballpark. Um, and, and obviously, he, he, the, I mean, he's even quicker than Simon Jones. I think he's probably the quickest bowler England have ever had. Um, so I don't know. And of course, the story's not over. You know, hopefully we get another 20, 30 tests out of him, maybe. Aidan but... McLaughlin asks, does Jimmy Anderson play at the Oval? If not, who replaces him? Well, it seems like a very... Uh, hello, Aidan, by the way. That seems like a very negative angle on a very positive day. <laughs> and I mainly say that because it's a really good, awkward question. And I don't know the answer. I mean, I suppose, sensibly, you decide at the end of the game. Um, and I think he's bowling quite well. He's certainly not bowling poorly, is he? Whether he's lost a bit, you know, uh, ultimately wickets judge everything. I, I don't think we're quite there yet. It feels to me that he's bowling quite well without a lot of luck. But... You know, he is going to be 41 in that week. Uh, they are back-to-back -back tests, and Josh Tung has made a very taken, uh, made a very, really good uh, case for his own inclusion. So, you know, basically, you get to the end of this game and have a look. And don't rule out Raleigh Robinson as well, you know. Obviously, he's, his uh, stock has gone down, hasn't it, in the public consciousness in recent weeks. He's a terrific, very skillful bowler. Background Noise asks, if England pull this off, they will have successfully set and executed a plan to beat the World Test Champions against the clock. How remarkable would that be? Yeah, really well put. I, I, I think that's fair. It would be pretty incredible. But this you know, the pesky factor that I haven't done it yet. But I, I think the point you make is, is it, you know, it's just starting to rain now and I fear it might never stop, what is the <laughs> forecast. But um, yeah, it, it would be an amazing thing. I mean, they are absolutely thrashing Australia around the pitch at the moment. And they have done actually since Ben Stokes came into Battle Lords. It's, it's completely changed the series since then, I think. Is that fair? I'd say so, yeah. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Because it feels that there's actually... First test and three quarters, Australia looked the better side. They just did, really. I know there wasn't much between them, but they did. Since then, it, I mean, here it doesn't look close, but it's 2-1. Do you think Australia are starting to feel that fatigue of the World Test Championship yeah, do, final actually. at all? I do, I do, I do. And I also, I think they have been a bit rattled by the way England play. Uh, you know, the, the depth and pace, the depth of the batting order and the pace which England play, the way they keep coming, that is difficult for any bowling attack. At the same time, you've got the Mark Wood factor combined with lots of people bowling with skill and consistency. There's no respite. And uh, it's very difficult when you're playing in these back-to-back -back games and, you know, they are playing already uh, their fifth test in, what, probably seven weeks? Stave C17 asks, could you argue that two key declarations from Stokes could cost England the Ashes? <laughs> too early in the first test, too late in this test. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, we're not there yet, are we? It's a really interesting uh, point, but we're not there yet. I suppose it did feel a bit late. I thought there was logic in the declaration today. I'm not, uh, 
Personally, I would have declared at lunch because the, we could see the forecast and it, it changed and it got worse for Sunday. So I'd have been tempted to, but the logic was fine, I thought. It's easier to score runs in the first innings with the pitch is a little bit easier and they were scoring so quickly. So they were kind of getting ahead of the game and I, I could see, you know, you know, I mean, what sort of callous, cruel would have taken Johnny Besto out when he was like 70 or 80 not out, yeah? Do you like think, shooting Bambi. Do you Bambi's think mother. we'd have this conversation if Bairstow had got his century? Yeah, I think so, yeah, don't you? I don't know, I think perhaps given how important a century would have been to him and how this England team's, you know, all about the entertainment and all that. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. I mean, it's a bit, everyone's sorry he didn't reach his century, but I wouldn't worry too much about personal milestones. It's a team game and he absolutely nailed it for the team so far in this match. Patrick Brennan asks, if this match is ruined by the rain, would Australia have to win at the Oval to stop it being the least impressive Ashes win? <laughs> I like the way you're thinking. That's the, that's the what. I mean, the Australian journos would definitely tell you that 2013, 3-0, by the way, uh, wasn't very impressive. But um, And some English journalists got sucked into thinking the same way. So I, um, I don't know because maybe I'll be missing series through history, but uh, it does feel like they're hanging on. I think that's a fair point. Dino asks, have England played the better cricket throughout the series? No, I don't think so, actually, uh, because they didn't in the first two tests, did they? There's a reason they were 2-0 down and some of it was a bit uh, you know, unnecessary and some of it was um, you know, very good Australian play. So no, I don't think so. I, I think on the balance of the whole series, uh, it's about where it should be. And if it doesn't rain, I'm pretty confident it will be 2-2. It's going to rain. <laughs> it's just how much. Uh, and finally, Jack Rule asks, is having your captain also being your premier fast bowler beginning to take its toll on Australia? I don't know. Um, back to back tests are probably taking their toll. I don't think it is that. I, I, I think he's getting a bit of unfair criticism. I think it's quite hard to stop this England team when they're going, uh, when they accelerate in the way that they do. I don't, you know, they're, they're doing things that no side has done before. Sometimes it doesn't come off. But the run rate today, uh, I think it was the third quickest test innings in history oh, um, uh, uh, that was over 500. Um, and I suspect that they might have had at least one of those other records as well. So it's very hard to stop and he probably is a bit tired and they maybe have one or two selection issues, you know, and they are missing Nathan Lyon. I don't know, it's quite easy to sort of blame people when things don't go right, but I, I, I'm quite a... I think it's more that England are very, very hard to captain against. Uh, and sometimes, you know, Johnny Besto could have been caught on the fence today pulling. I mean, we did see that happen, was it at Lord's? And, uh, well, that sort of thing happened at Lord's. And today, the ball sailed into the crowd. He's that sort of player. Um, I, I don't know, I, I still think there's a, an awful lot to like about Pat Cummins and um, an awful lot to like about his team, actually. Uh, but it'll be really, really interesting to see how he reacts, how are the Australian media, how Australian former players react if this does go 2-2. Because if it does, it will feel like, again, that uh, England are favourites. And that it would be the mother of all turnarounds in this series. But we're not there yet, and it's such... Every day is given so much in this series. Every day has been such fun, and it's been so surprising. So, you know, maybe there's a twist or two yet. I just hope it's not a twist from the weather, because this game deserves so much better than to be a damn disappointment. See you on day four. Cheers, cheers.